is such a sweet thing. accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a new creature. Old things have passed away. I'm now living a new life. The life I now live uh, is in Christ Jesus. Jesus the Christ paid the price for me with his blood set me free. Satan and all his demons they have no more power over me. They have no dominion over my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All power in heaven and on earth is given unto me by Christ Jesus. And the authority of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I have the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever I loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Right now, I loose myself. Every imprisonment of the devil and his followers. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. Right now I bind and put a stop to the wages of the enemy, his recklessness, his wickedness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I abhor evil. I take Jesus Christ as my way. My truth and my life. I give the total of myself over to him. He reigns in my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God. Every blessing that he has put upon me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm wearing the whole armor of God. The armor of God gives me protection. It gives me power over evil principalities. Power against wicked powers. Power against rulers of darkness of this world. Power against spiritual wickedness. Power against all the powers of darkness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am God's powerhouse. The power of God resides on the inside of me. And is manifested on the outside of me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The glory of God covers me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All demons. Even Satan. Are subject to me. Through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I push down all my enemies. They cannot hurt me. I send forth. A mighty destruction to scatter, to destroy, and break in pieces every gathering or meeting of my enemies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No plot, no device, no counsel of the wicked against me shall stand. Every tongue that shall rise up against me in judgment. I condemn it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ saves me from all those who rise up against me. The Lord Jesus Christ is my defender. The Lord Jesus Christ is my rock. The Lord Jesus Christ is my deliverer. The Lord Jesus Christ is my strength. The Lord Jesus Christ is my fortress and my high tower. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If the enemy comes in against me, the Spirit of the Lord, like a flood, will lift up a standard against him. And they cannot pass through. The Lord Jesus Christ has set a bound around about me. There's a strong hedge of protection round about me. It is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that covers me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe and I receive blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was shared for me on the cross of Calvary. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, I receive the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and I use it to set a boundary around me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I receive the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ upon me. 
I receive the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ upon my house. When the enemy sees the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, they shall pass over us. The destroyers are not able to enter because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. If my enemies seek me, they shall not find me. My life is hidden in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ is a covering and a hiding place for me from all my enemies, including Satan, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. According to the word of the Lord, if I eat or drink any deadly or harmful thing, it shall not hurt me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I curse every sickness. I curse every disease. I curse every attack upon my body. And I command them each to die and disappear from my body now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a child of God, the Spirit of God is my God. I am led by the Spirit. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Because I acknowledge God as my Father. He will order my footsteps and will direct my path in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am not lazy. I follow the leading of the Spirit of God in my life. I'm energetic at all times. Always yielding. Always ready to be in total obedience to God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The voice of a stranger I will not hear. The leading of a stranger I will not follow. The Lord is my shepherd. I will hear him. I will follow him. But Jesus Christ is my anchor. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I cancel all negative confessions that I've made at any time in my life. I agree with the will of God for my life. I come against all negative confessions spoken by me or anyone against me. As I speak, I send the power in the word of God to change every negative confession to a positive confession in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Give God praise this morning for the opportunity to be together. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We depend on God. Hallelujah. I just trust that he can depend on us. We greet you this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus the Christ, who causes us to triumph in every situation. We are the Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church, Beaumont, Texas. It's our joy this morning to share with you on Facebook, members of our church on Facebook also on video conference and video uh, on conference call. Amen. I'm praying for you and I thank God for you. God bless you today. Amen. God keep you as my prayer. Pastor Sampson is uh, out on vacation. Praise Amen. the Lord, that young man worked really hard. Amen. And he needed rest. Everybody needs rest. Even Jesus said, let us turn aside and rest a while. Amen. Hallelujah. My joy now to present to you my only begotten daughter, Lindsay Granger, is going to lead us in worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, 
to God. It's a good morning to give God glory and to Amen. give him praise and to give him thanks for the great things that he's done and to worship him for who he is. He's such an awesome, awesome God. He's so amazing. He's all powerful. He's everything that we need him to be. God, we just thank you this morning for the activity of our lambs to bless you this morning. Thank you, Father, for the voices in our body just to bring glory to your name. We honor you and bless you today, God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name forever you are the same. We worship and adore you. We bow
been our shelter. He's been our shelter, God. My shelter. Oh,
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. Just don't know, Lindsay. I give blessings to your daddy. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. Thank God for you who joined in worship today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ask you to turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm number 103, verse 7. And that's going to give us a good place to start off this morning. Hallelujah. Our Father and our God, thank you for this blessed day. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your people. Thank you, most of all, for your precious Holy Spirit, our teacher. Amen. Holy darling Father, how we do love you and thank you for your word. It's a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. We do not stumble. We do not lose our way. And you taught us that. And we continue in your word. And we show ourselves to be your disciples indeed. And that we will know the truth. And that truth we know would make us free. So we thank you right now for the freedom we receive from your word. Thank you, Father. Your anointing is upon your word, but your word falls on and on the ears. And we hear so as to receive. I pray for every person, Holy Father, that listen to this message. I pray, Holy Father, that spiritual needs are met. Less of us, the Holy Father, and more of you. Less of us, the Holy Father, until there's none of us and all of you. Not unto us, but unto your name, your glory, majesty, dominion, and power is our prayer in Jesus' name. All to be with that prayer, I say it, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Psalm number 103. Praise the Lord. Day. He made known, meaning God, made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of men. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of men, that he made known his ways in which he himself walks. He made known to Moses his steps, his methods, how he shows his glory. Showed him his way in creation, how he ordered it. He showed man, showed Moses uh, how he deals with men. Moses spent 40 years in the wilderness, and there God showed him many things. He showed him his ways, his acts to the children of men. And I want to remind you that. God's ways are much more valuable than his acts. That I remind you today that God is a whole lot more than what he does. Amen. Who he is is of more value. Hallelujah. I think it is unfortunate that in the circle of witches, warlocks and sorcerers that Moses is more respected among them than among some of those who call Jesus Christ. Moses was a meek man, the Bible says. He was meek. And with the power that Moses had, that's what made him meek that Brother Peter Williams taught me that that word meek, it comes from horse training. That a horse is a magnificent beast, but he can be trained to you tie his reins around a tree and he'll just stay right there until you get back. And also a horse can be trained where you can just drop the reins, just drop them on the ground. And he may prance around, but he'll never leave that spot. That's meekness. Mm -hmm. Meekness is never weakness. All right. Meekness is born out of a powerful desire to obey. Amen. Hallelujah. And we can know God's ways. That's the wonderful thing about it. We can know his ways. And I believe God wants to... He won't let me get away from this. 
amen, that there's so much about God that we don't understand that we can understand if we would take our focus of what he does and put our focus on who he is. That does not mean that uh, we don't trust God to take care of us. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about not trusting God to provide for us. That's not what I'm talking about. That God wants us to have the type of relationship with him that we're not just in it for the stuff. Amen. That we're not just in it for the healing. We're not just in it for the prosperity. We're not just in it, amen, to do well in life. All right. Because, beloved, this is not the end. Amen. 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 As children of the heavenly king, we have somewhere to go. Amen. And there's no way we can get it all down here. Because even the Bible declares that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places where we can receive what God has for us. And who God is to us is greater than what God does for us. Yeah. I, I pray that you'll receive that today. Yeah. Because, beloved, God is God's more than money. He's more than a promotion on a job. He's more than uh, a new automobile. He, he, he's much more than that. Yes, and when you come to understand his ways, you stop complaining so much. Because um, when you know his ways, you, you come to understand uh, why he allows the wicked to prosper. You'll understand why he allows he allows the godly to be oppressed. Well, you see, God's not going to allow anything to take us out. First Corinthians ten thirteen, I think. <laughs> Amen. I say I think. I used to know the Bible real well. I could quote scripture verse. Amen. Walking concordance and all of that, but reading so many different versions of the Bible through the years, amen, I'm just not as sharp as I was at one time in my life, and then being older, sprinkled into that, because it kind of changes everything. But if I'm right, it said, the verse that I want says that there's no temptation test and trial taken you, but such as is common to man, that word temptation is translated temptation test or trial. So that's why I read it that way. There's no temptation, test, or trial taken you, but such as is common to man that it happens to everybody. You're not the first one. But God will, with the temptation, test, or trial, offer a way of escape so that you'll be able to bear it. And some folks say that God's not going to put any more on you and you can bear. Well, I'm going to say he won't allow it. Amen? Hallelujah. That, that God's ways are past finding out. There are no book you can read to find his ways. There's no, even you read the Bible, it's not going to tell you his ways. He has to reveal himself to you. Amen. Amen. See, because if you're just reading, trying to find out God, uh, no man by thinking can know him. On, he has to reveal himself to us. So then, God is spirit. And I think we've established in this teaching that God is spirit and we are spirit also. We are tripartite beings. We are spirit beings living in a physical body. And that's what holds us. That's our earth suit that holds us to the earth where gravity keeps us down here. And our spirit has a soul. My soul, that's my mind, my will my imagination, my emotions, and my intellect, that what makes me the unique person that I am. Please know that God wants us to pay attention to things of the spirit. I didn't say things of the spooky. God wants us to give our attention to things of the spirit. While <clears throat> we have needs, amen, we have desires, we have wants, 
we have matters that have to be settled. Yeah. God understands all of that. But none of these things are truly accomplished as God's way would prefer outside of a relationship with him. Amen. See, God's way is not our way. He can meet the need, exceed the need, remove the need. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's just so many ways, so many things he can do about our situation if we would just pay more attention to the things of the spirit and not give so much attention to things in time and sense. Yeah. Please know that God knows where you are. Thank you, he knows what you're going through. Yeah. He's able to deliver you out of any situation. Yes, but as long as you concern yourself with only things of time and sense, you will never get to understand or know his ways. This is the way I like to say it. Every crazy thing going on in your life. And I want you to get tired of me saying it so that you get it down in your spirit. <laughs> For every crazy thing going on in your life, God's doing something super wonderful right here beside you. But as long as you're paying attention to things of time and sense, you think you're in trouble and there's no way out. But God's doing something super wonderful over here trying to get your attention that he's handling that and more. And if I walk with him, whatever's happening over here won't touch me because my spirit does not allow my flesh to react to it. Hallelujah. I continue to praise God for the many wonderful things he's done. Now, I'm not with that song. I'm not with that song that if he don't do nothing else, he's already done enough. I'm not with that song. It's a beautiful song. Amen. And the notes are just beautiful. And whoever that is that sings that song, that recorded it first, she really can pull it and all of that. But that's not my song and shouldn't be yours either. Amen. Amen. Because when you think, when you say God's done enough, you put limits on him. Amen. And when you put a limit on God, you step out of his way. Yeah. You step away from his ways. You step away from him yeah. when you put limits on God. What God has for you is far beyond anything your mind can fathom. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who knew? Yes. See, you know, I, I look at this day in which we live, and it is a horrible day. Yeah. It is an evil day. But who knew <laughs> that little nappy is not an old boy in Trinity Garden could withstand all of this wow. at 70 years old? Yes. Who, knew? who knew? Who knew that you would accomplish what you've accomplished? Who knew yes. that you would be able to stand against the wiles of the devil? Who knew that the devil wouldn't be able to take you out way back when? Yes. My, my, my. But thanks be to God. Yes. He keeps on. Yes. <laughs> he keeps on blessing us. Hallelujah. Yes. See, the key to having boldness and faith, you know, I want to say, and, and I, I say it, and I hope you understand what I'm saying when I say it, that use the faith that you have. Don't be ashamed of the faith that you have. Now, to be sure, Man, I, I love reading. I'm reading about the, the healing revivals from days gone by, and so forth and so on. How a uh, guy like uh, guy, I don't call his name, but they Shambach, his his father in ministry, A.A. Allen, I will call his name Jack Cole, uh, Samuel Nick, Sam Nix. I mean, these guys were powerful people, and they operated in the gift of faith. And people were healed who had no faith. Mm, yeah. That's because they were operating in the gift of faith. But I want you to understand something. You, as a child of God, you have been dealt the measure of faith. God will take whatever faith you have and get to you what he wants you to have. Yes, yes. Don't be ashamed of your faith. Don't, I wish I had faith like so and so. Well, are you willing to pay the price for that? <laughs> you know, um, 
my pastor used to teach, he used to teach us, uh, he say, uh, you you ask me a lot for more faith, you, you don't know what you're asking for, you can be asking for more trouble. My Lord. <laughs> And the older I get, the better I understand what he's saying. Just use the faith that you have. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I want you to know that you have enough faith. Thank Don't leave folks who tell you, talking about you yet yeah, grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And yes, your faith ought to grow. Yes. But don't let anybody disrespect your faith. I, that's the way I want to say it. Don't allow anyone to disrespect yes. your faith. Because your faith was given to you by the same one who gave them their faith. Yes, sir. God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Yes. Say, I got it. I got it. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Don't let anybody disrespect your faith. Use the faith that you have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm reminded again of the man with the lunatic son. He said, he said, he said told Jesus, if you can do anything. Have compassion on us and help us. Jesus told them, uh, the if ain't on me. Amen. It's on you. Amen. Then he said, well, Lord, I believe. Help help me with my unbelief. Yes. Yes. That the truth of the matter is, is that, beloved, if your prayer don't make the grade, that's the way I like to say it, because that's the way God taught me. If your prayer doesn't make the grade, God will give you the word to say so that he can get to you what he needs you to yes, have. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes. Now, the key, I want to say, to having boldness and faith is understanding the two realms. Physical realm, spiritual realm. You're a spirit being. So, as a, you have a physical body, so that gives you license to operate here. Okay? See, Satan doesn't have any license to operate here. That's why you always got to use somebody. Okay? Our body gives us license to operate here, but as spirit beings, we have license to operate in the spirit realm. And your boldness in faith comes from knowing that you're not just limited to what you say. Right. You're not just limited to what you hear. You're not just limited to what you feel. You're not limited to what you smell. You're not limited to just what you taste. That I'm far more than my five senses. I'm a spirit being. On, God made me where I can operate in the spirit realm. God made me where I can fellowship with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, here's the question. Where is the spirit realm? When you talk about spirit realm, are we talking about the heavens? No. Spirit realm is right here. There are things going on around you right now that you can't see with your natural eye. There are physical things happening around you that you can't see. I mean, there are particles in the air <laughs> that you can't see with the natural eye. But also, there are spiritual matters around you. There was a guy uh, sleeping at the door this morning, door of the church this morning. And one of my precious members was really concerned because she didn't want me to have to deal with that. And and he's the guy that that, that, that goes through the community. He's just doing some of everything. But I just woke him up and said, hey, man, time to get up. <laughs> I said, you sleep good? You have a good nap? He said, yeah, I did. And it was, it was strange. This morning, just speaking to him, he was clothed and in his right mind. <laughs> I can't tell you who he is because somebody will know who it is. Yeah, yeah. I can't call his name, but I call him by his street name. And he told him, y'all have a blessed day. <laughs> <laughs> We're spirit beings. Yes. Everybody, every person on the planet is a spirit being. Yes. I, I can't emphasize that too strong. And once you understand that now, you, you, now, Pastor, you just said something crazy. Say spirit realm is right here. Yeah. And you just can't see it. There are times you can have a spiritual experience right in the room where you are with God. And you think you spent an hour. 
and you looked at the time, maybe just 15 minutes, you crossed over. We've had many experiences in, 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 in worship at this church where we just crossed, where we crossed over. And it seemed like we had been here five hours. And it was just an hour and ten minutes. <laughs> Come on. So how do I assess it? Okay. First of all, recognize that it exists. There's a spirit realm. There's a physical realm. Help me, Lord Jesus. We use the example of 2 Kings chapter number 6 where uh, Eli Eli Elisha, yeah, it was Elisha who they surrounded him, the enemy surrounded him, and his assistant said, Master, what are we going to do? It's 1 Kings 6, 15 through 17. He said, what are we going to do? The, the young man was afraid because he couldn't see what Elisha could see. So the Lord, he prayed, verse 17, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray you open his eyes that he may see. Mm -hmm. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw, behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. That beloved, you can't see the angels that are protecting you with the natural eye. But please know, they're here. They don't wait till you get in trouble and then go and have to dispatch the angel to you. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. See, here's, here's, here's and, and I hope we get to this today, but here's uh, the wonderful mystery to me about angels that they can be here protecting us and in God's face at the same time. My Lord. My Lord. See, because we are spirit, we are capable of God consciousness. Because we are soul we are capable of self-consciousness because we are flesh, we are body, we are world conscious. We are conscious of things going on around us. But this is what I'm going to say to us today. And if you had a pencil, I would ask you to write it down. First thing I want to say is, if God allows it, you can handle it. If God allows it, you can handle it. And please know, nothing gets by God. Okay. Well, you're thinking, well, well, why he let it happen? Okay, well, why you let it happen? So I can remember distinctly, man, I asked God one day, Lord, why you let this happen to me? And he said to me, why you let it happen to me? All right. Now, that doesn't make sense to you, does it? Mm. But somebody got it. Yes, sir. See, Scripture's clear. He says, what you've done to the least of these, yes. my little ones, you've yes. done it also unto me. Yes. So if I belong to him and he belonged to me, whatever happened to me happened to him. Yes. You can understand that, parent. Yes. <laughs> Somebody messed with your child, they got problems. Mm -hmm. Because they did it to you. Some folk are so attached to their cars that somebody can hit their car and they say it hit me. They didn't hit you, they hit your car. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The second thing I want to say to you is this. If Satan can do it, God can undo it. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if, if you had a pencil, I would ask you to write these things down. The next thing I want to say to you, and don't get nothing else I say to that, just if you get these few statements, I believe it'll help you. And if, if, if you if you write them down where you can see them, it, it, it'll help you at some point in your life, if not today. The third thing I want to say is, if elements turn against you, you can turn them to favor you. All right. If elements turn against you, you can turn them to favor you. Here's the fourth thing. If you can get sick, God can heal you. Yeah. Yes, if you can get sick, and everybody doesn't get sick, but if you can get sick, God can heal you. And here's the last thing I want to say. If you can lose it, God can restore it. Thank you, Lord. If 
if you can lose it, God can restore it. Yes, he can. I mean, he really can. Case study, Job. Job 1 and 6. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. Skip down to verse 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he have is in your power, only upon himself put not forth your hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Chapter 2, verse 1. Again, there was a day. <laughs> When the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Now, where is this happening? Because the sons of God are there, and, and, and you know, we understand these, these to be angels. And therefore, we won't see it somebody else. That's okay. Um, because I understand angels. Angels can be here and there. I read the Bible, I read the Bible, and I keep reading the Bible that angels can protect us here and still be beholding God's face. Because the Bible says so. I believe that. Now here are two separate occasions where Satan shows up at the Sons of God meeting. Now, whether they're there to report on Job or somebody else, that's not really important. What is important is that God brags on Job. Mm -hmm. Can he brag on us? Oh, no. Is he proud of us? He brags on Job, but he gives Satan permission to touch his stuff. Look down to verse 6, Job 2 and 6. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he's in your hand, but save his life. So, Satan give a permission to touch Job's stuff. Job was a rich man. And Job lost everything in a single day, including his children. One messenger came out to the other. Read the book. It will help you. A whole lot you may not be able to understand. That's all right. You'll understand it better by and by. That's what they taught us. Keep walking with the king. <laughs> so he comes back the next time. And God says, you can touch his body, but you can't kill it. Mm -hmm. All right? Now that's when Job says, all oh, days my point of time when I wait for a change coming. It also says the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we think that God took his stuff. We know if you read the Bible, you see that God didn't do it. Satan did. Yeah, God allowed it to happen. But God already knew what he was going to do about it. Amen. Okay? Now, here's what I want you to look at this morning. There are decisions being made regarding our lives in the spirit realm. And anytime Satan attacks you, you got to know he knows something you don't know. If Satan, being a spirit, he's privy to the spirit realm. I didn't say to the third heaven. I did not say to the throne of God. Hello. Hello. There's a difference in the spirit realm and the throne of God. Some teach seven heavens. I don't quite understand it, and I, I'm, I'm being frank about that. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I don't have to know everything. I do not have to know everything. That's, that's not a problem for me. But I know about at least three. Paul talks about being caught up to the third heaven. And we understand the heavens, that's the sky that we can see. Then there's a heaven beyond that, and there's a heaven beyond that, and several more. I'm not going to teach about that today. But this is what I do know. Is that Satan has access to the spirit realm. Whoever in the, who's ever in the room, okay, somebody on the phone, Talking. I learned how to, how to, how to I, I can, what, what, what I call it, cut folk off, tune them out. That's what they got. Tune, I can tune folk out. When I go in the restaurant, folk be talking loud, they don't disturb me at all. 
because I'm not listening to that conversation because I'm not interested in what they're talking about and I turn them off. I've trained myself to do that down through the years. You can be in a room with somebody on the phone, okay? And you only hear one end of the conversation, but you can figure out what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Amen. Okay. Laverne's on the phone. I don't pay no attention what she's doing, but not, but not if, 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 if she, there's some noises she can make that alarm me because I'm concerned about her. I love her. Got it? And I'm concerned about what she's concerned about. And she get off the phone. I say, baby, is everything okay? And I'm expecting a report. <laughs> because I know by the tone of her language, her vernacular, and her demeanor when something is wrong. Amen. Got it? Amen. Can you understand that? Yes. All right, if you can understand that, you can understand Satan in the spirit realm hearing God talk. Yes. Yes. Anytime Satan attacks you, he knows something you don't know. Glory to God. Did Job know that God was bragging on him? No, he just loved the Lord. He wasn't conceited. Right. I'm special to God. I'm Mr. Job. No, that was not Job's <laughs> demeanor at all, man. He is skewed evil. Yeah. Yes, yes. He avoided evil at all costs. Mm -hmm. Never in a million years would he have thought that God was bragging on him. <laughs> Help me, Lord Jesus. But Satan, he's already upset with Job because God's got this hedge of protection around him. So you remove that hedge, I'll make him curse you to your face because he's an accuser of the brethren. But understand something, y'all. When Satan attacks you, if you, if you see, if you can understand God's ways, you'll, you'll figure out Satan like that. Number one, he dumb as wood. Yeah, really. Yeah. Since you're, he is dumb as wood. I mean, you know, dead wood. He has no new tricks. But now, how is Job's situation really turned around? That's what we want to look at now. That Satan attacked all this stuff, he used the elements against his children. He used his enemies against his possessions. Got it? Mm -hmm. And Job lost everything. And then another, on, again, another day they, there was a meeting of the sons of God and Satan came to present himself also. And the Lord tells him, you can, you can touch his body, but don't kill him. And here Job is scraping his body. Mm. I mean, that man is sick. I mean, like, 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 punk is even sick. <laughs> Get up and say that, like, punk dog. That man was sick, y'all. And then his friends came to him trying to offer him some comfort, but then they started judging him. Uh -huh. See, because I want to remind you of this, beloved, that most folk think that if you cannot avoid the cross, that you can't survive the grave. Mm. They think if you cannot avoid a scandal, mm -hmm. got it? Yes. That you can't survive it. Mm. You can't survive the fallout. Well, I want you to know, beloved, that bearing the cross is really about a scandal. Mm. That's really what it's about. It's about suffering shame yeah. for the cause of Christ. Suffering shame for the cause of Christ. But here we are in the 21st century, and we don't, we, you know, Lord help us. Some of us, we are afraid to obey God because how it's going to make us appear to those that we think we need approval from. I want to share something intimate with you. You don't need approval from anyone on the planet. I don't care what they have, whatever they have, they got it from God. Mm -hmm. And when they die, they're going to leave it here. Amen. 
You do not need anybody's approval to obey God. Whatever the Lord tells you to do, he's going to bless you for doing it. And may not bless you the way you think he's going to bless you. See, because when the Lord tells us he's going to bless us, we think about how we bless. But <laughs> yeah. Boy, if I had $10 million, I, 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 I feed the poor and I do this and I do that. See, that's what we think about blessing. But you see, when God thinks about blessing, man, it ain't nothing like you can even think about. I mean, he can, he can change things for you overnight. Yes, sir. Do you hear me? Yes. I'm telling you, he can change your wild for real. And he can turn things around for you. You can wake up one morning in peace. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. Just peace. Yes. Just peace. Still got bills. <laughs> Still got debt. But you got peace. And th there ain't no amount of money that you can pay for that kind of peace. Now, is anybody understanding what I'm trying to say here today? Yeah. 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 That beloved, you see this, you see these two, 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 two days, these two meetings here? On a day, first chapter of Job, and then again, in the second chapter of Job. Well, this goes on all the time. Mm -hmm. You don't know what God is saying about you. You don't know what God is saying he's going to do for you. I'm telling you, look, listen, listen to me real good. That beloved, when Satan knows the Lord is about to bless you, he's going to try to jump ahead and give you an invitation. Oh, wow. yeah. To try to keep you away from God's best. Yeah. Now, how do I know that, that this, this is not the only time? Go with me to 1 Kings. I want to, I want to show you another. I want to show you another time Satan shows up after me. First Kings 22. It's a lot of reading, and I'll be doing a few minutes, okay? Beginning at first, verse 13, First Kings 22, 13 through 23. And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah, now this is Ahab and Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, he's calling, he, he wants he want to hear from the Lord. He wants to hear from the prophet of the Lord. And Ahab's little prophets, y'all know, they, they, there's a bunch of them, and all of them, they're just lying, and they're going to try to say what makes the king feel good. But Jehoshaphat said, I'm going to fight with you, but, but, but I need to hear from the Lord. All right. So he wants to know, do you, do you have somebody in this kingdom that, that God talked to? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. yeah. I, 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 I want to yeah. share something with, with you, beloved. Uh, all these folk who call themselves prophet God, they talking to them. All these folks that call themselves prophets, I'm telling you, God is not talking to them. And I'm going to tell you something else. If money is attached to it, if, if you got to give somebody some money for them to tell you what the Lord told them, all you got on your hand is a soothsayer. What's a soothsayer, pastor? A witch? A psychic, all the same thing, y'all. You got to pay somebody to tell you what the Lord said. Look, man, freely I have received, freely I give. Yes. Yes. What God tell me to tell you don't cost me nothing, so why I got to charge you? Come on. Amen. Amen. Help me, Lord Jesus. Yeah. That, 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 that. I'm just trying to get y'all to understand God's ways. That ain't how God works. He don't put He don't put his word in the mouth of folks that you got to pay to get it from. Come on. Amen. That's not his way. Okay, so here we are. He sends for Micaiah, and the messenger was going to call Micaiah, spake unto him, saying, Now look, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. They're all saying the same thing. Let your word, I pray, to be like the word of one of them, and just say that which is good. I know I'm changing up the words. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord said unto me, that will I speak. Now, first of all, Ahab didn't want to send for him because he always had something bad to say, to say to Ahab. You know, he called him a hoe and all that, he called his wife a hoe, all that, you know. <laughs> and he ain't like him. He said, he going, he, I, I, I don't want to send for him, but he had to send for him because Jehoshaphat wasn't going to fight with him without hearing from him. Yeah. So, 
The messenger say, now what you need to do, everybody's saying to, to go forth and you're going to be successful. So say what they say so, he, so he'll feel good. Let me tell you something. Man, <clears throat> the truth is more important than you feeling good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I know, and, and I, I fully understand, you know, folks don't like to go to church where they preach against sin. You know, because they want to hold around and they want to be nasty and they want to mistreat their family and all this kind of stuff and uh, do their downline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do their downline. Well, you don't know what I'm talking about. You will soon. All right. But beloved, I want to hear from God. Yes. And that's who you need to hear from. Yes. Here we go. Verse 14, again, Michael said, as the Lord liveth, what the Lord says to me, that will I speak. So he came to the king. King said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Robab Gilead to battle, or shall we fall back? Meaning, shall we stay where we are? He answered, go and prosper. The Lord will deliver it into your hand, live it into your hand of the king. <laughs> That's what everybody else was saying. And Ahab knew he wasn't talking with me. He knew God hadn't said that. Let me tell y'all something. Even demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Are y'all listening to me? Yes. And the king said in verse 16, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? He said, Okay, you want the truth, huh? All right, here goes. Verse 17, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, They have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Didn't I tell you that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? And he said, Hear thou the word of the Lord. He, Micaiah, is saying this, okay? Mm -hmm. Hear thou for thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab? that he may go up and fall at Romath Gilead, Ramoth Gilead. And one said on this mountain, another said on that mountain. And there came forth a spirit, guess who this is, and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. Mm. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith, well, how shall you do that? He said, I will go forth and I'll be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. <laughs> and he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets, and the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. Do you get it? Mm. It's the same type setting. The setting shows up. Now, somebody wants to say to me, well, but see, now, now, now that, that, that can't be the devil because he said he's going to be a lying spirit in, 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 in Ahab's prophets. Hold up. Do you really think that the devil is on your side? Oh. <laughs> Look, y'all, the devil ain't even on the devil's side. Come on. The devil ain't on nobody's side. He ain't trying to work nothing out for nobody. He's destructive. That's all he wants to do. He wants the same thing to happen to everybody else that happened to him. Yes. Throw him out, Lord. They ain't no good. Mm -hmm. He's accusing the brethren. That's who he is. That's what he does. It ain't like you safe in Satan's camp. Amen. Amen. Cause stuff been working for you with witches. Do you really want to look around and really what's going on around you? You think you safe from witches? Oh, they're not your friend. Oh, they're not. Their ultimate desire is to destroy you. Ain't no witch going. Ain't no witch your friend. Well, now, I don't know because because she told me what to do, and I got my boyfriend. I, I got her away from him. Away from, I got him away from that woman. Yeah, but what you got, though? All right. What do you really have? Right. Yes. Every day, you wondering who you're looking at. Oh, Lord. Come on. Every time he a little late coming on, you wanted to be with that other woman. Come on. That ain't it. And, and, and look, let me tell y'all something. Every time a witch give you something, it give you something to come back to them. Yep. Help me, Lord Jesus. Yep. First Chronicles 21 and 1. Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. 
that got that got Israel in trouble. Zechariah three and one. I think you're gonna get it today. Zechariah three and one. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Did y'all get that? Revelation twelve, last book of the Bible. Revelation twelve. I'm read verses 9 and 10. Revelation 12, 9 and 10. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Mm. My, my. Satan presented himself also. <clears throat> John 6. <clears throat> John, I'm, I'm trying to get you to see something here. John 6, verse 70. 70 and 71. This is Jesus talking. Jesus answered them, Have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, of course, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Now, this is what I want to say to us this morning. I want to say it again, okay? okay can, can I say this again? Mm -hmm. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help us. If God allows it, you can handle it. Yes. If Satan can do it, God can undo it. If elements turn against you, you can turn elements in your favor. Thank you, Lord. If you get sick, God can heal you. Yes. If you can lose it, <laughs> God can restore it. Yes. Did you get it? Yes. Please know and understand, beloved. This joker, he, he not your friend. No, he, he not your friend. But we can cancel his efforts. Before they manifest in the natural realm. I know what your question is. Well, now, if we can counsel what he got planned, how can we know his plan? Mm -hmm. I'm glad you asked. Mm -hmm. Again, I say on the D, he's dumb as wood. Yeah. I mean, he's just as dumb as a two before laying on the floor. Mm -hmm. He has no new tricks. He does the same thing over and over and over. Secondly, he does not know you. Mm -hmm. Don't you know if he knew Jesus, he would never would try to get Jesus to worship him? Man. I mean, how dumb is that? He gonna promise Jesus something that Jesus already got to get him to worship him. Yeah. And you know he's a fool. Because the Bible said if that, if that monkey had known that, that Jesus was going to die on that cross and that was going to save us. He never would have put that in them both minds. <laughs> but I want to say you can count it. He has no new tricks. He's a liar. That's the first thing. He's a liar. You are, you are of your father the devil, John 8, 44, John 8, 44. You are of your father the devil and the lust of your father you would do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Right. He's deceitful. I just read that to you a moment ago. How he deceived the nations. Yes. He's an accuser. How he accuses us before God day and night. He's an imitator. This monkey is able to of himself to transform himself to appear to be an angel of light. Mm. Everybody, I'm telling you, man, everybody that can preach ain't, ain't, ain't God preaching. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of them that can pull it and don't know the Lord in the part of their sin. Oh, Help me, Lord Jesus. Yeah. We're spirit beings. We can access the spirit realm and we can change. We can cancel Satan's efforts before they manifest in the physical realm. Go to Daniel. I just want to give you this one sample. I'm going to try to let you go. Say pray. pray. Say fight. fight. Same thing. <laughs> Prayer is not preparation for the war. It is the war. 
Prayer is not preparation for the fight. It is the fight. Are you there? Daniel 10, I'm going to read verses 2 through 3, then I'm going to skip down to verse 10. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks, that's 21 days. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. 21 days were fulfilled. And behold, verse 10, and behold, an hand touched me, which sat upon my knees and upon the palm of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, Understand the words that I speak unto thee. Now, get that. A man greatly beloved. God's been talking about him in heaven. <laughs> What's God saying about us? That, that keeps coming back to me. Understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright for unto thee am I now sent. When he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you just set your heart to understand and to chasten yourself before your God. Your words were heard the first day. The first day of those 21 days, God heard you. And I'm come for your words. But the prince of the king of Persia who stood me one in 20 days, that's the same 21 days, and lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the king of Persia. We got to keep praying because God's the one who's going to resolve everything righteously. Are you hearing me? Amen. See, take a closer look at Job meeting with God. And you need, to, you, need to, you need to read this. Job 38, that's when God answers Job's questions. And he asks him some serious questions. Serious questions. Job 38, pick it up, verse 1. I was going to skip it, but the Lord said, read it. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkness counsels? by words without nothing. Who this is talking and don't know nothing? Gird up now your loins like a man, and I will demand of thee and answer thou me. You may answer me some questions. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who laid the measures of thereof, if you know? Or who has stretched the line upon it? Verse 6, whereupon are the foundations that are fastened? <laughs> How things stay down? <laughs> Who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth as if it had issued out of a womb? When I made the cloud the garment thereof and thick darkness a swaddling band for it and break for it my decreed place and set bars and doors. And say, hitherto shall you come, but no further. And here shall your proud ways be stayed. Have you commanded the morning since your days? Have you called the day spring to know its place, that it might take hold of the ends of the earth and shake, watch this, that the wicked might be shaken out of it? Mm. Have you ever in your life commanded the morning? Say, man, who are you talking to? Job is getting some insight mm -hmm. on God's ways. Yeah, yeah. Now, why, why would God want us to know his ways? Why would God want us to know how he does something? Right. <laughs> I got a real simple answer. My, 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 my late father, my late father, he was a preacher of the gospel. And he built, he built um, two homes, two houses. He built, and he built a house for two of his brothers. Now, when he and my mom got married, he built a chicken coop, and the evening wind blew it down. True story. He and my mom told him. And her, him and dear told me the story. But he was an extraordinary carpenter. I guess God just anointed him. And he taught us how to cut boards. He said, you measure twice, cut it once. And then when we had to build studs, you cut one and you write pattern on it. Because you use that same board to cut the rest by it. 
because if you use the second board to cut the third board and the third board to cut the fourth board and the fourth board, board to catch the next board, those boards are going to be shorter and shorter. We got something going on right there. It's going to be, they're going to be shorter and shorter. So you cut all the boards by the pattern board. Didn't have power saws then. He taught us how to cut in a straight line. You hold the saw and you put your, in your index finger, guided the saw. Now, why did he teach us all of that? Why, 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 why did he show us his way? He showed us how to do it so that we could do it. Do you understand that? Now, if you can understand that, you can understand this. God wants us to know his ways so that we can do what he does. Now, if you want to argue with me, that's all right. Argue's fine. That's, that's good, but I'm not going to argue with you. I stopped doing that when I was 35, 35 years ago. Well, watch this. How do you really think Moses was able to go to Egypt and do all those different things that he did? Ten plagues? I mean, how did he do that? God showed him how. God showed Moses his ways. This is why his ways are so important. You need God's ways so that you know how to fight the devil. It is important, children, <laughs> to know his ways. I ask the Lord every day, Lord, show me your ways. Show me your ways. I, I want to know his ways. I want to know Jesus. I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. That when you come to understand God's ways, you can live a peaceable life. See, even what you can't do, God will do. Yes, he will. No temptation, test, or trial taking you, but such as is coming to man, you're not the first one. Mm -hmm. But God will, with a temptation, test, or trial, offer a way of escape so that you can bear it. You don't have to go through all of that. Mm -hmm. When you discover and understand God's ways, you'll know that there's an escape yes. before you go through it. God doesn't want you to go through it. He wants you to take the escape. Yes, sir. Is anybody here? Yes, that, sir. That beloved, God taught Job how to fight the devil. Yes. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And chapter 42 is the end of the story where Job got twice yes. what he had before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That it's, it's the truth, brother. I'm not making this stuff up. If God allows it, mm -hmm. you can handle it. Amen. If Satan can do it, you can undo it. Mm -hmm. If the elements turn against you, you can turn the elements in your favor. If you can get sick, if you can get sick, mm -hmm. God can heal you. If you can lose it, God can restore it. How do I know that? Did all of these things. But Job, yeah. our sample. And that beloved God's ways are passed by not. His ways, his thoughts, his high above ours, and heavens are but earth. You know what that means, huh? That means you can only learn them in the spirit realm. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God had you to listen to me today so I could talk to you about. That his ways are more his ways are more important than his acts. Mm -hmm. God is so much more than what he does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ask God. Pray. Yes. Show me your ways, Lord. Show me your ways. That's where the peace is. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You as you used to would get frightened of the dark. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> But when the darkness comes, you just let the light shine down. Yeah. We you know his ways. Yeah. Let's pray. Our Father in Jesus' name, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this blessed day. Thank you, Lord, for your people. Thank you, Lord, for your precious Holy Spirit. I teach you again. Holy darling Father, show us your ways. Teach us 
that we may teach others. Give us broad and open hearts to understand readily the lessons you place before us that we can grow thereby. by. And spread your kingdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for this day. And we thank you, Lord, for opening our understanding. Now, Lord, I pray now for those who are so close as I am, who have not accepted you as their Savior. I pray, Holy Father, you draw them to you now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, I put before you my brother and my sister who was sick today. And Lord, you told me to tell them that if they can get sick, that you can heal them. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I believe it. Grant them the grace to receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I say to you, be healed from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Trust God. Hallelujah. Believe his word who says of himself, I am the Lord thy God that healed thee. Now that you do not accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want you to pray this prayer with me and say, Dear God, I know without Jesus I'm lost. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus that I believe he died for me and he rose for my justification. Dear God, come to my heart. Heal my broken heart. Save me by your power divine. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. For I need it. Have mercy upon me, O oh God. Forgive me my many sins. Protect me, Holy Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I confess him as my Savior. Jesus, you are my Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saving me. My Holy Father, fill me with your precious Holy Spirit so that I can serve you the rest of my days in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah to the Christ. He's sovereign, move as he will, bless whom he please, and he chooses and pleases him to bless you. Trust him, my brother. Trust him, my sister. Hallelujah. We give God the praise for all that he's done here today. Thank you, God, for revelation knowledge. And until next time, we'll be here on Wednesday, amen, at 6.30. Hallelujah.